Jack Abramoff may be the most notorious and crooked lobbyist of our time. He was at the center of a massive scandal of brazen corruption and influence peddling. As a Republican lobbyist starting in the mid-1990s, he became a master at showering gifts on lawmakers in return for their votes on legislation and tax breaks favorable to his clients. He was so good at it, he took home $20 million a year. It all came crashing down five years ago when Jack Abramoff pled guilty to corrupting public officials, tax evasion, and fraud, and served three and a half years in prison. Today, he's a symbol of how money corrupts Washington. In our interview tonight, he opens up his playbook for the first time and explains exactly how he used his clients' money to buy powerful friends and influence legislation. I was actually thinking of writing a book, uh, The Idiot's Guide to Buying a Congressman, uh, as a way to put this all down. But first, I, I think most congressmen don't feel they're being bought. Uh, most congressmen, I think, can, in their own mind, justify uh, the system, rationalize. Yeah. And by the way, we wanted as lobbyists for them to feel that way. Abramoff would provide freebies and gifts, right. looking right. for favors for his clients in return. He'd lavish certain congressmen and senators with access to private jets and junkets to the world's great golf destinations like St. Andrews in Scotland, free meals at his own upscale Washington restaurant, and access to the best tickets to all the area's sporting events, including two skyboxes at Washington Redskins games. I spent uh, over a million dollars a year uh, on tickets to sporting events and uh, concerts and whatnot at all the venues. A million dollars? Yeah, yeah. For the best seats? The best seats. But the best way to get a congressional office to do his bidding, he says, was to offer a staffer a job that could triple his salary. When we would become friendly with an office and they were important to us and the chief of staff was a competent person, uh, I would say, or my staff would say to him or her at some point, you know, when you're done working on the Hill, we'd very much like you to consider coming to work for us. Now, the moment I said that to them or any of our staff said that to them, that was it. We owned them. You're asking me to trust the top one-tenth of one percent of wage earners and the politicians that they outright purchase with stewardship of the economy. You're asking me to, to trust them to run the economy in such a way that not only benefits them, but benefits me and everyone else besides. How many congressional offices did you actually own? <laughs> uh, we probably had very strong influence in a hundred offices at a time. <gasps> Come on. A no. hundred offices? In those days, I would view that as a failure because at least 335 offices that we didn't. When Barack Obama and I were literally sitting at a desk in a high rise in Chicago, beginning to plan how we would try to get this economy out of a ditch, literally, the first guy I called was John Corzine. These people have never given me any reason to trust them. Use a little Google foo, go and look up white collar corporate crime statistics, you know, from 1980 on. These names show up over and over and over and over again for the same shit, embezzlement, bribery of public officials, outright theft, tax evasion misstatements of profits and they do it again and again and again and again and pay billions of dollars in fines and they do it again and again and again this is not just an isolated incident or two this is a pattern this is a part of the way they do business part of doing business in America is breaking the law over and over and over again and getting caught over and over and over again and you're asking me to trust these people 
I'm not here to talk about plans to deal with this till 2017. I, I'm saying we've got a real problem, and I'm tired of Republicans and Democrats who either want Republicans who want to burn the place to the ground, and Democrats, with all due respect, who want to offer a plan that gets it through the ne their end of their second term of their presidency, and then screws me and my kids okay, when it's over. And until that. we okay. do that, we have to deal with the extraction that is at foot. It is the reason the financial markets are behaving the way they're behaving. That is a mathematical fact. I, this is not some opinion. This this is a mathematical fact. Tens of trillions of dollars are being extracted from the United States of America. Democrats aren't doing it. Republicans are not doing it. An entire integrated system, financial system, trading system, taxing system that was created by both parties over a period of two decades is at work on our entire country right now. And we're sitting here arguing about whether we should do the $4 trillion plan that kicks the can down the road for the president for 2017 or Burn the place to the ground. At this point in history, you can no longer afford to live in blissful ignorance of the facts. You can no longer afford to be wrong about this. The decisions that these people make, the laws that these people break, the money that these people extract from the global economy illegally, and in some cases legally, Everything that they do affects every aspect of your life. They control the expertise, and you know the joke is that if you want to talk to someone from Goldman Sachs, call the Treasury Department. I mean, yeah. it's just staffed with people who are from Wall Street. So it's an area where they really do control both ends of the debate. You don't have much choice between the Republicans and Democrats. You know, you can get the Democrats in. You have as many people from Wall Street as with the Republicans, maybe more. So it's certainly a very, very big problem.